<laughs> Welcome to Narrowboat Astronomer. Um, I'd like to introduce another member of the family, Poppet, <laughs> who's on my shoulder at the moment. Uh, and as you can see, we're um, still in the house going through the narrowboat buying process. So uh, I thought I'd make this vlog, which is vlog number two, uh, about the remainder of the buying process because we're quite close to completion now. Um, so I'll give some information on um, the survey and uh, not details about our survey, but just generally how a boat survey looks. And um, for the astronomy part, um, I want to concentrate on uh, one of the most basic tools for sky mapping, uh, which is called a planisphere. Uh, and I'll show you a few varieties of those and how you can make your own. Uh, and we'll sort of cross that over with the, oh, there she goes. Um, cross that over with the uh, night sky time lapse that I did uh, in the first vlog, um, just so we can see how we can use the planisphere. Um, to see uh, what's up in the sky uh, at any particular time and how that sort of alters through the evening. So um, without further ado, let's get on with the, uh, the narrowboat bit and tell you a little bit more about our purchase process and where we are. surveys uh, well uh, if you have a, a good broker uh, and we selected a b and b uh, down at crick wharf um, can't praise them enough for how they've led us through the process um, when it came to the survey what uh, we got from a b and b was um, a list from them of um, just uh, people they uh, surveyors that are uh, sort of well known um, they don't recommend uh, anyone in particular and um, so you're left to do your own research uh, which is which is a good idea anyway so you can visit the various um, canal forums or whatever other um, network you have Facebook um, groups and um, we selected Craig Allen Marine off this list uh, which we'd heard good things about and um, once you select someone from the list again um, the broker made it easy by uh, arranging the survey um, liaising with us for a date and um, we were arranged for uh, a survey at Crick Marina uh, on the 5th of Feb. And um, coming up in a, a few moments, you'll see some video that we took of the boat in the dry dock there. And um, when the water sort of rushed in to, to refloat the boat, I didn't get the whole thing then. Um, <laughs> it's taken a bit long. Um, but you get the idea when you see the, the water rushing into um, the dry dock and floating the boat again. So I'll show that in a moment. Um, what you get if you, for your survey? Well, of course, you get a, a nice, uh, nice little report, um, several pages, depending on the type of survey that you have. And I'll go through um, some points that are in that. Not anything specific to this survey again, but um, just what you can expect in that survey. And of course, uh, you get a nice, uh, nice little invoice uh, to go with that. Uh, as you'd expect. So there's, there's normally an invoice for the, the dry docking of the boat and if you have an outer water survey so that uh, Craig can in the surveyor can inspect the hull uh, and do his ultrasonic measurements and other inspections of the um, hull exterior and um, there's normally a, of course a cost for the survey as well. Prices, uh, I mean we're going for a 56 foot uh, narrow boat and um, the, the whole package of survey so lifting it out of the water and the survey itself comes to around 800 pounds but of course your mileage may vary depending on length of boat and i guess how it's taken out of the water so um, that's the survey so there's a, some pieces coming up now which tell you more about what's in the survey and those video segments as i say so see you again soon First up then, the external hull survey. Um, this is where, of course, the boat needs to be out of the water uh, because it gets inspected for its build quality and condition. Uh, it gets hammer tested and also ultrasonic tested um, so they can check for the plate thickness and you see where they scrape the crud off to, to allow that to happen. 
Uh, we check for pitting depth and delamination uh, and or corrosion of the hull. Uh, so basically anything that affects the insurability. Um, hull coating, so, you know, is it blacked? And also the sacrificial anodes are checked. So hull internal next. So inspected where access is possible. So any floors or linings <laughs> obscuring uh, what they can see uh, won't be commented on. Uh, water and toilet holding tanks uh, inspected where visible for leaks and corrosion and also I guess pipe ingress and egress points uh, where that's uh, visible. Hull penetrations, they inspect all outlet fittings in the hull for height above water line and condition. Uh, the rudder, all components inspected where they are accessible, so bearings, rudder, swan neck, etc. They do say the rudder tube is normally obscured by the diesel tank, so that's not normally inspected. The weed hatch assembly is checked uh, for height above water line, condition of plating, welding and the securing mechanism. Most important is that can sink you. And the stern gear and propeller is inspected without removal of any of the components. Gas locker is emptied of all contents and hammer tested and inspected for its gas tighting integrity. Diesel tanks uh, inspected where visible, um, no liability taken for internal corrosion or hidden areas. Okay, nearly there now. Cabin external, areas to inspect it, security of handrails, deck fixtures, cabin fabrication, quality, condition of paintwork, appearance of windows and seals, etc. Uh, security of any covers and crash frames. Um, engine and gearbox shall be run under load for a minimum of one hour and this inspection is visual, no components are dismantled or removed. Okay, so last but not least, this is where the surveyor says uh, a full electrical uh, inspection can only be carried out by a suitably qualified and registered electrician. So this survey is no substitute for such an inspection. and. Uh, will be a general overview uh, with all devices operated where possible. For example, we know our sort of horn and, and light were operated and no doubt many other um, devices if they could be. So that concludes the uh, survey uh, contents and uh, hopefully that's given you a good overview of what to expect and what should be uh, sort of contained in the report. J cloth and glass um, cleaning stuff and all that. Front. Oh. Speed up a bit. <laughs> so nice.
I hope you enjoyed those uh, videos. Uh, so that's it for the narrowboat part. Now in the uh, astronomy part, I said I'd talk about uh, planispheres. So um, what's a planisphere? Well, it's a uh, sort of a sky computer. Um, great for narrowboats, doesn't require any power. So we like that and it's nice and thin and compact. Um, they're made up in their most common format of two circles, uh, as you can see here, if I open that up, and um, just those two components and a, uh, a sort of pin in the middle which uh, you can pivot the cover around the outside. Um, the bottom disc contains uh, months and dates, uh, plus a sky map for the whole year, um, which you can probably just see if I bring that a bit closer. So months and dates and a sky map for the whole year. The front cover um, contains a window, uh, a sort of elliptical window, uh, which I hope you can see through the reflections there. And it contains times around the outside, so you line up times with the month and the date uh, that you're actually observing. So the window also has, I don't know whether you can see that, um, some horizon marks on it. So depending on which direction you're looking, you've got uh, an eastern horizon, a western horizon, a north and a south. And um, let's see that in a little more detail with a proper camera. Here then we can take a closer look. So this is the Philips Planetarium, Glow in the Dark Planetarium. That's a bit over the top, but uh, it's nice and big for demo purposes. Uh, here in the window you see the eastern horizon that I was talking about. Uh, this is the southerly horizon, and the next one the western horizon, and of course finally, if you're looking north, the north horizon. So if we were to then um, want to look at the sky for February uh, around midnight we would twist this circle around until the midnight uh, lined up with the date in February. So let's pick the 20th. So there we're set. Now the picture if we're looking north would look a little bit like that and there are the constellations you would see along that northern horizon. And if you were looking south, uh, you would see those constellations. So you see Leo dominating the uh, centre of the view and Cancer just off to its right. And Virgo with all the spring galaxies just rising uh, off to the left. So um, say now we were looking in September and see how the sky changes. So let's pick the 14th of September again, midnight. Just line that up there. And we're looking the uh, the window again now. So if we're looking uh, south, you can now see the picture has changed, and Andromeda dominate, dominates the uh, the centre of the view. And there we are, as simple as that. Here I thought I'd take the opportunity just to jump to the. Uh, uh, computer screen for a while so this is a web page I'll put the link in the description down below and if I can I'll overlay it on the video uh, a little bit later um, so this is an online planisphere so familiar um, circle around the outside which we can move this time uh, so we're moving the, the outer wheel rather than the inner wheel and you can see if I set this to sometime in February which is when I'm recording this uh, let's make it at the top the 20th uh, so this would be then the midnight view and you can see it's consistent with the planisphere we saw before with uh, Leo here just dominating the uh, just just left of center and Cancer just right of center then Gemini uh, Orion and Virgo uh, rising in the east so that's just a little look at something you can get online um, if you've just got a, a computer and a web page to look at. Um, here's also another website which I've mentioned before um, where you can make your own planisphere. So let me just take you through this uh, process. So this is by Dominic Ford. So thanks to Dominic for uh, creating this and he's got all sorts of other wonderful resources on here as well. Um, so this is a, a page where you can select the latitude you want the planisphere for and you can see there's quite a selection there so they're every sort of five degrees so there should be uh, plenty there to cover almost everyone that wants one in the world. 
and so if I pick one uh, for the UK where I am I can pick the 52 oops not south 52 degrees north and what happens then is it generates uh, in the background uh, or selects for you uh, it makes available um, the download links for the kit with the instructions in um, if you just want to print out the wheel and the outer um, part that the wheel fits in then you can just pick the star wheel PDF and the planisphere and print those off um, because these don't cost anything other than the printing you can see uh, you could print off a selection of planispheres just to cover you when you go traveling uh, or if you want to see um, the skies from remote telescopes I would say typically print one off for TD in Chile uh, to cover the slew telescopes that uh, I use uh, and then you're pretty much covered to see the sky map then um, so I'll put a couple of videos in after this as well just to show the article as I've printed it off and put it together and if you have access to a printer and a computer uh, here's an example of some sheets that are printed out from a, an online website uh, called inthesky.org and it has a planisphere uh, page where you can put in what latitude you want and uh, you can print out a, a PDF file or images and um, you can print this on card or paper and you just cut them out uh, just on the outline there and that sort of grey area to cut the hole for the planisphere and um, yeah we'll show you in the next little clip how to put that together so here we have the cut out pieces uh, so I've cut out the, the, the hole and I've also punched holes in the centre uh, so there's the wheel uh, that will turn and you can see uh, the hole punch through the paper in the center which is actually marked when you print it so no problem there similarly on this piece um, so this is what the planisphere ring will sit inside and you can see we've punched another hole there which is marked on the paper um, for you and it just sort of folds around there and uh, that hole you have to cut out on the top as well so this one's printed for 35 degrees and if you've got a split pin like this they will show you how it goes together so we just push that through the center hole of the uh, planisphere ring and sky map and then we turn this bit over and you'll see we slip that through from the back can be a little fiddly and just splay out the pins so that's nice and secured and that gives us our sort of turning pivot for the planisphere and then we just Flip it over, fold it over, and there's your planisphere for 35 degrees south. Now, it is a bit floppy when it's open like that, or just folded like that, so uh, it pays to put a bit of side tape either end, and here's one. Uh, we did earlier, as they say. So this is just had sellotape tape on the ends and just makes it a bit more uh, solid. And of course you can print this on card as well, so it's uh, even more solid. And it's free. Uh, to make this good uh, project for the kids and uh, you can print it for many latitudes so you can have a, a selection of them like we have here for 35 and 55 here's a practical demonstration then here I've taken uh, the all sky uh, view from uh, the SLU all sky camera on Tenerife uh, for the same time and date as the planisphere um, showing. The planisphere is one of the free printed off ones um, that you can construct, uh, which you'll have seen. And um, what you can see is that the projections are slightly different between the planisphere and the um, sort of fisheye lens of the all sky camera, but you can basically see the constellations are the same, um, slightly different orientation because of that difference in projection, but you can see they're there. Just on the, the right hand side, I've sort of put the constellation lines in over the image just so you can see them a little bit better. Um, so we see sort of Leo. Uh, just slightly to the left of centre uh, and Cancer just to the right of centre and we can see Virgo just rising there um, down to the left and we can see uh, Orion, um, beautiful constellation uh, containing the Orion Nebula uh, which is just off to the, uh, the far right there. So I hope that just shows uh, how the sky map is uh, sort of uh, showing exactly what you would see uh, if you were there at this time and date uh, in the sky. 
just to finish off the uh, astronomy part then, I'll just show a few video clips now of uh, the different planet spheres that uh, I've uh, managed to put together from my collection. Uh, and here we have a planisphere that's sort of free, uh, it was free on the cover of a magazine, uh, but of course you have to buy the magazine. Um, very nice, plastic, waterproof, built for latitude 50 degrees north, uh, so northern hemisphere, uh, high northern hemisphere uh, would be able to use this. Um, very nice, very colourful and uh, yeah, free. This one I include because it's, uh, well, it's a little bit different, it has an additional layer uh, and it has an additional pivot point. It's called a precession of the equinoxes uh, planisphere, a historical planisphere. Uh, and as you'll see, it looks a little bit different in the center. So there's these two holes, uh, one which rotates around a circle, which you see there, which is your precession circle and covers uh, 26,000 years, believe it or not. And you turn that outer dial there to the millennia that you would like to view the sky for. And you can see how uh, the position of the North Celestial Pole uh, actually moves around that circle. So Polaris, at some point you'll see, is no longer the North Star. And as we come back to today's date, you can see uh, we put it over Polaris and that's, that's our millennia. Um, but yeah, quite a historical uh, tweak. The outer edge there uh, just goes in thousands of years. Uh, in the future or in the past and the rest of it just operates like a normal planisphere so you've got the uh, the month and the time circle around the edge so here we have a rather special planisphere this was a present from my wife a beautiful watch with a planisphere background and uh, outer ring so you can use it just like you would any planisphere, uh, obviously set for a particular uh, latitude, uh, which I think this is around 50, uh, 50 to 55 degrees north. Um, sorry about the focus on this, <laughs> putting it too close to the camera there. But uh, yeah, as you can see, a very special thing. And uh, as long as you stay uh, within this latitude band, um, useful uh, around the world and a rather nice uh, inscription on, uh, on the back. So yes, a, a very special form of planisphere, this one. Again, uh, an unusual uh, presentation, this one. Um, it is a planisphere, believe me. Called a star pocket, um, comes in its own little travel uh, carry case. In fact, it's probably made uh, for travel. And it's a sort of um, tubular version, this one. Let's just get it out of its uh, holder. And um, yeah, you can see it comes with its own uh, instructions in several languages, which of course blokes will never read, so we put that to one side. And um, you can see it's a tubular format, compass on the end, so you can orient yourself um, to the direction you're viewing. And um, yeah, lens at one end which you look in, and the planisphere ring itself that you would normally turn is replaced with these um, cylinders. So you have all of the months on there as you have around the edge of the planisphere and you have the times which you line up with the month. Again, sorry for bringing this a bit too close to the camera for focus. Um, so if we set February uh, midnight there for say mid-February and we look in the eyepiece, you can just about see with this camera uh, a small planisphere there um, that you can read inside. Obviously you can read it a lot better when you're using your eyeball rather than the camera. Um, but yeah, tiny little planisphere in there and as you change the rings around the outside um, you would obviously turn that planisphere to reflect what you should see in the night sky. So very neat. Uh, it's got a red light uh, on the top where you press that button um, just so you can see it at night and um, very good for travel. Just a little update on our buying process. As you know from this vlog, we had the survey completed and um, from that I went back and renegotiated the price just a little bit down. Uh, that was accepted, so brilliant. Um, and that allowed us then to go through the next part of the process, which was the signing of the contracts. So we went down to AB&B at Crick and uh, we got those signed. Uh, from our side, the seller had already signed from his side, uh, so that was then binding, no one can back out. Um, so then it's just 
payment of the money into uh, what Airbnb called the client account, uh, which is sort of transition account, uh, and then they pay the seller, uh, and um, all's done, and we own the boat. So now we have gone through what we call the completion date, uh, which was actually uh, yesterday and we now own the boat so <laughs> really exciting and we can now get on the boat and hopefully in the next vlogs we can show you some actual narrow boat astronomy and uh, we can start sort of shooting and using the equipment from there um, we also arranged after that uh, of course you've got to home your boat somewhere so we went across to a local marina um, which was Crick Marina and uh, we actually decided to, to base ourselves there as a, a sort of training ground uh, and uh, a place to base ourselves and, and launch off to probably other marinas um, but we'll also do a bit of cruising in between and a, a few stop offs I dare say um, just to sort of check the skies and, and show you something of using the astronomy equipment from the towpath. So I look forward to that and um, thank you for watching uh, and hopefully uh, a new vlog coming to you um, in about a couple of weeks or so. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye bye.